Hey everyone, and welcome to your seventh Java game development tutorial in our little tutorial series. Um, if you remember last time, we started getting uh, our world class put together, which is going to be very important. Uh, today we're going to um, create a method for loading images, um, and that will make us able to do sprites next time, I hope. I really want to do sprites, because then we can get started doing something you know really interesting. Uh, I'm going to put this in the renderer uh, class. Um, we're going to create a method uh, down near the bottom after our rendering loop method. I'm going to say public static buffered image, which means this is going to return a buffered image. We'll call it load image. Uh, it takes a string path. That's the path to our image. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say buffered image uh, final image equals canvas dot get graphics configuration dot create compatible image. Uh, and well, mm, don't do that. Ignore what I just did. Buffered image raw image equals image io dot read renderer dot class dot get resource I'm just going to take a path for an image right here so we're just going to say path uh, sorry not in quotes that would mean literally the word path what we want is the variable path now it's going to give us an error saying um, you know the unhandled exception so we're going to say add throws declaration, and we'll handle these errors as we get them whenever we load images. Hopefully nothing too bad happens from that. Um, now what we need to do is we need to create a new image, buffered image, uh, final image equals... Now see, the, thing, what we've, the reason why we've created this method is because we don't want to take just the image that we get with image IO, because what we want to do is we want to optimize the images for um, you know the highest possible performance and the way you do that is you must create a compatible image based on a graphics configuration so what we want to do is we want to create a new image that is compatible with the graphics configuration of our canvas and then we want to fill it with the contents of the raw image we loaded so we're not using the raw image rather we're using a compatible image that that's very optimized and that looks like our original image. So this is all fine and dandy. Because uh, it only has to be done whenever we load the image. It doesn't have to be drawn. Don't, we don't have to do this process every frame, just once we load the image. So, buffered image, final image, equals uh, canvas dot get graphics configuration dot create compatible image. The width and height of the image are, of course, the width and height of the raw image. So raw image dot get width and raw image dot get height. It also wants to take a um, I'm going to return right here to make our code a little neater, nicer to look at. Uh, it can also take a third parameter that says transparency. Um, in our game we're never going to use any kind of translucency. It's either going to be opaque or transparent. So we're just going to say transparency dot uh, bit mask. That should be right. Um, actually, I, think that I wonder what happens if we say raw image dot get transparency. Hey, look at that. Okay, we can just get the transparency of the raw image. That's fine. Um, let's, let's use that. Uh, and then return final image because that's the final image we need. So now anytime we want to load an image, We'll just say renderer.load image and give it the path to the image. Now, if you look over here in my project hierarchy, uh, you can see that I have an image called test. It's not inside any package. Right now, let's create a package. Let's say resources.images. And I'm going to put test.png inside of here. Test.png just looks like this. As you can see, it's a tiny image. If I zoom in, it's tiny image. Um, of a face that I drew with my brilliant um, artistic skills. Um, as you can see, whenever we look at it in actual size, it's really small. 
this image is very small. That's because uh, each pixel is going to be blown up, you know, into a block like this. It's like we zoom, we're zooming in right now. That's how that's going to work. So if we want to test and see if this uh, method doesn't throw us any errors, uh, let's go to the game class after renderer.init, and it's important that we do it after renderer.init because what in the init method is where we create the canvas, and here we refer to the canvas. If we were to try and load the image before calling renderer.init, it would not work. So right here we'll do that, and then we'll say renderer.loadImage uh, resources, uh, sorry, slash resources. This, this should begin with a slash. If it doesn't begin with a slash, um, then when we say renderer.class.getResource, it'll start looking for it in the, in the it'll think that the, the, the root of our uh, path is the package in which renderer.class, which is this right here, is, and it's not. It's uh, in a completely different package altogether. So begin with the slash. Slash resources, slash images, slash test.png that's the path to the image of course it gives us the error that we told it to throw so we're going to surround with try catch for now and then let's say buffered image image equals renderer.load image import buffered image um, now we'll say system dot out dot print line image It'll print out some gibberish that doesn't really mean much to us, except that it has, in fact, loaded the image properly. And now, if we quit the program, yep, we have, in fact, loaded the little image that I made over here. So that's all good. That means our image is being loaded, uh, and it's a compatible image, too, which, is, um, which means optimized rendering. So if you like this episode, please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.